Welcome to the Keto Evangelist Kitchen. I'm Brian. And I'm Carrie. And this podcast is dedicated to making things simple and easy for you in the kitchen. Carrie Brown is a classically trained, world-class chef who has a passion for creating ketogenic recipes that taste better than anything you've ever experienced. But more than that, she loves teaching people how to cook the right way. And each week on this podcast, Brian and I discuss all the ways you can create awesome keto food that is guaranteed to make you a rock star in the kitchen. If you'd like to learn more about Keto Evangelist Kitchen, you can go to KetoEvangelistKitchen.com and sign up for the newsletter. In exchange for your email address, you'll get brand new recipes delivered to your inbox, ready for you to whip up in the kitchen and enjoy with your friends and family. So sit back, relax, and get ready to laugh and learn. You're about to enter the Keto Evangelist Kitchen. Uh, Okay, so this is like becoming a thing for us. Um, we, we now have, we have another guest. What is this like? Is this like number five, like two Four. years, two years, Four, I think no guests and all of a sudden guests. Mm. I mean, not that I'm complaining or anything, um, uh, because here's why, let me explain to you why, um, because it allows people to hear, uh, Carrie talk to someone who actually knows what they're talking about. Um, and it, I think that's a benefit to the audience. So, so I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it's a, it's a thing. It's a change. And, you know, sometimes people don't like change. I, it's good to change things up once in a while. You know, I don't like change, but I don't like change in the form of coins. Um, in fact, I will, if I get, if I, I never have cash, right? I, nowadays, everything's digital. Um, and if I do actually pay with cash for whatever reason, uh, and they give me coin change, I will leave it in the, in the store somewhere. So I know. <laughs> so I, yeah. So I know that <laughs> here's why. Let me explain to you why. Um, so do you send people on little treasure hunts? Like no. I left some change in the store and here's well, some I mean, clues. If you ever see, if you, yeah, if you ever see me paying in cash somewhere, you know if I get change, it's going to be left somewhere. Um, and and the thing is, like, I'm so opposed to coinage that it, like, I've had people like, oh, I'm sorry, we don't have any bills. You know, I'll give you five dollars and quarters. I will leave that. I will not take that with me. So. Uh- um, I have to admit that uh, I'm embarrassed to say that I've been here, what, 17 and a half years now, and I still have to think really hard if I'm in a store and I'm doing cash, which is very rare. But if I am, I'll like pour all the all the coins on my hand and offer it to them to yeah. pick out the right, right. thing because I still don't know the coins. Right. I have this many. That. Yeah. And then they, they take <laughs> Yeah. It. Take what you want. <laughs> Um, so, so the reason I do that is because two reasons. One, my son, my middle son, Noah, he, all his life, he is like, he's found like immense joy when he finds a coin on the ground or somewhere. Like he just, it does like a penny. It doesn't matter. He's like, Oh, I found a penny. Like he, he's really excited about that. He, you know, he's, he's almost 21 now. He still gets excited about finding change on the ground or whatever. So I know there's going to be some other kid somewhere who really likes finding coins. So I know that I'm, you know, I, I know that at least one kid's going to be like, oh my gosh, this is not just a coin. See this the is- joy you're spreading, Brian, right. the joy right. everywhere, little, little blobs of metal joy you're leaving for the world. Blobs of See, metal joy. If you joy. did that in Canada, you'd be dropping like loonies and toonies. And that's like a lot of money. <laughs> right. So it's funny that you say that because we went to Canada last year or wait, no, two years ago. No, was it last year? When did we come to your house, Carrie? Was it, la- it was two years ago. It was last, no, it was last it was year. Like, okay. Um, and I had to spend cash in Canada and I got Canadian coins back. And because I didn't know what they were, I didn't leave. Like I didn't, cause I didn't want to take a chance. Like here's a thousand dollars and it's a coin. It's Canadian. I like, so, but plus I wanted to bring some home for my son. So, um, so I, that's the one time I didn't leave coins anywhere. So uh, maybe that was a good thing. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not terribly familiar with Canadian money. It's just, it's suspect to me because it's not American. So I'm not really sure what it is. <laughs> but by the way, we have this delectable Canadian accent on who, who's been piping up and we haven't intro- even introduced her. Oh, that's my fault. That's my fault. Um, How well, rude. I apologize. So um, then I'm going to go, I'm going to step back into the shadows, can you, Carrie. Can you tell we're not used to having guests? <laughs> A little bit. We have, we have no idea how to behave publicly. <laughs> well, I don't know that anyway. It does, I mean, guest or not, that's my... That's story. why we keep you at home, Brian. <laughs> yes, agreed. Um, all right, so you want to introduce our guest, Carrie? I do. We, today, special treat, we have the the wonderful Leanne Vogel, who no. is currently hanging out in Eugene, Oregon, but is originally from one of my favorite places, which is the Great White North. 
Yep. Calgary, Alberta, Canada represent. So, <laughs> Oh, Calgary. Oh, I've been to, I love Cal- Calgary was one of the first places. Um, actually, so Calgary was the first place I ever ate a, an American style pancake. Okay. I'm glad it you said pancake. Fir- it was the first time Calgary, the, the first meal I ate in Calgary was at the top of the Calgary tower in that revolving restaurant. And I, and I had, the, the thick American style pancakes and bacon and maple syrup and eggs. And I was so confused because I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this maple syrup? And, and so I just kind of quietly sat there and watched what everyone else was doing because I didn't know what to do with this weird combination of food in front of me. And I saw them pouring maple syrup on their pancake and bacon. And I was like, what's happening? This is so wrong. Did so you that, just, that was my first time in Calgary. That's hilarious. That's actually where my husband took us for our first date was the Calgary. There you go. Oh, really? We're Calgary Tower buddies. Look at that. Did you, did you have pancakes? For your first day? No, no. I think I was vegan at the time. Oh, okay. So, uh, so no I pancakes. Probably a lot of vegetables. Right. <laughs> Pretty safe, safe bet. <laughs> Pretty safe bet. Um, so did you just chug the, the maple syrup then, Carrie? Cause you didn't know what to do with it. You're just like, all right, it's a container. It's liquid. No, I'll just, I, I no, it. actually, I just, and of course, this was a long, long time ago before even low carb. This was when I was like, you know, 95 pounds soaking wet and my body somehow worked how it was supposed to. Um, and, and so I just copied everybody else and I was just like, ew, ew. And I kind of shut my eyes and poured it all over everything and, and, and the butter and all the pats of whatever yellow fat that was and, 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 and ate it. And it was, and it was magical just because I was in Calgary and, you know, I was away from my parents for like the first time I, I actually moved to, um, Invermere, you know where Invermere is, Leanne. Yeah, so I actually live there. And I was working as a pastry chef in Invermere. And this was my, I went to the Calgary Stampede. This was just after I moved to Canada. And um, I hitched a ride. You wouldn't do that now, but I hitched a ride to Calgary and stayed at the YMCA. And on the first day, I took myself up the Calgary Tower for breakfast. And it was just magical because it was like this massive adventure and it was all new. And there was, I saw a bear on the road and it was just like massively exciting. Oh, I miss Canada. So well, I made you homesick now. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we, uh, I have some questions. Um, for folks who are not familiar, um, uh, the Calgary Stampede, the, it's not just a Canadian football team, right? That's, um, that's an actual thing. <laughs> Calgary Stamp is an event that happens in July every year and they call it the greatest outdoor show on earth. There's lots of cowboys. It's a big rodeo. There's lots of rides. Um, I guess you could consider it like a carnival, but it's way bigger than that. Like people, um, chuck wagon racers and, um, just a lot of people prepare for this and train for this event. Now for, and there's a lot of money at stake. <laughs> there's a, there's a lot of money at stake. No, it's for yeah. folks who are, who may not be familiar or who have forgotten um, from, from the Calgary Olympics. Calgary is essentially like an old West kind of town ranchers, very ag, very like, I mean, there's, it there's used an, to be, it the, used to be, but then we got a new mayor and um, right very forward thinking and now it's it's really changing it's really hip and cool and it's kind of gotten rid of that old west right feeling. that vibe is gone right um, yeah yeah but they're it's, trying to hold yeah. on to those traditions as yeah. people are wont to do right so yeah. the, the calgary stampede is like one of my best ever memories because you know i was this little english girl who'd grown up watching you know a bit of american tv and and so I come on this big adventure to Canada on my own. And I was, I, I went to the stampede and I went to the chuck wagon races. And it was magical for me because I was like, oh my goodness, cowboys are a real thing. They're actually not just for TV. This is real. And they, you know, and the, everyone was like tossing their cowboy hats in the air and going, yeehaw. And I was like, oh, it's real. I would argue, was- I would argue that not a single one of them said yeehaw. I like well, uh, we are <laughs> we are in Canadian, and I was just like you know eyes the size of dinner plates because I'm like this happens in real life. This isn't right. just like television. It was just I felt like I was on the the set of a show because that's the only way I'd seen it. And so the Calgary Stampede is like one of my favorite memories because it, it was just. And the people were so happy and everyone is so friendly. It's true what they say about Canadians. And it was just like magical. 
So I love it. I'm curious. I really, really loved it. I'm curious then, Leanne. Um, you've said a few things here that we have questions about. One, yeah. the vegan thing will come to you in a minute. As, yeah. a, as a former vegan, I'm curious as to how you made that round trip. Um, yeah. Because I know, I mean, I know mine. So, I, I, you know, it's interesting to hear that. But how does a, how does a, how does a Calgary girl end up in the States doing what you're doing? <laughs> Um, wow, that's a loaded question. Well, it all kind of started with writing a book. I wrote the keto diet um last year. It came out last year. Um, but I was writing it in 2016. And it's one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. That book is there's so much information in that book, and I had to write it so fast that it completely took over my entire life. And so my husband noticed that I was struggling. I hadn't been like I wasn't going outside. I was stuck in my office. So we bought a little RV. So on weekends when he wasn't working, we could go out in the woods and I could continue writing, but at least I would be more in nature. And that's kind of what started this whole US path is when the book launched and we started touring, everything was great. And we got home and I kind of had a midlife crisis of, I'm not happy in this house. I've spent the last year in my office. We need a change. So we um, ended up looking for a new RV just so we could travel more. And we found this 40 foot RV and we went through it. And I was like, wow, it's so big. You could live in this. And then Kevin looked at me and I looked at Kevin. And I'm like, could we live in this? Mm-hmm. And that just started this epic quest of buying the RV, renovating it, selling our house, all of our worldly possessions, moving into it, and then realizing, well, you can't really live in Canada in an RV because it gets cold there Mm -hmm. and it is very challenging to manage something that big in the cold. So then we came down to the US for the winter, really loved it and thought, hmm, I wonder if your wonderful government would give us a visa. And so we applied for that and it took a long time. Um, Flew up to Toronto, got the stamp of approval and that's where we are today. So we've just been traveling around and um, I do these long stints of like four days of all the work I need to do in a month. And then I peace out with no internet for the rest of the month. Right. (laughs) yeah, which is is a a model that I really like. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to, how to imitate it, but it's so far not working out for me. Um, so now you travel around. So I, I clearly, uh, everyone wants to know: Have you hit all of the 48 contiguous U.S. states? Just yet? about, but we missed Oklahoma. And oh, first of I all, haven't... you never miss Oklahoma, right? You're, you 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 were lucky <laughs> that you di- that you didn't go through it. Don't no worries. Go on. <laughs> I really like the interior states, um, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Delaware. I haven't been to, but every other state we have. Oh, and Alaska. Is, well, but right, I right. Been there yet. Well, that, that's okay. I mean, well, I mean, Alaska is essentially just, you know, Canada West. I mean, it's, yes. I mean, you, you kind of know what's going on there. Um, all right. So when are you coming back to Connecticut? Um, probably never. Because <laughs> 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 Roundabouts, roundabouts, never, give or take. <laughs> Roundabout of never. So um, when you live in an RV and you don't want to spend a ton of money staying in places, you don't really go west or sorry, east of Texas mm-hmm. because there's just no free places to live. And you know, I live in Connecticut, right? Yes, I know. I'm sorry. You know, I just moved here. No, she's and, saying and you I can stay like with her. She's saying you can stay with her. It's a large house and it's free. <laughs> oh, so yeah. Personally. And I have a forest you can park the RV in and... I just remodeled this ridiculous kitchen that you and I could play in and do some fun videos and all Oh, I love that plan. Yeah. We have, when we went out east, we didn't realize how expensive it was going to be to park our rig. We were spending like a hundred dollars a day. Yeah. And you know, out in Arizona, it's free. Right. So it's sort of like free hundred dollars. I don't know. I'm going to go with free. (laughs) Right. Yeah. That's the, that's the thing, you know, the, the westward expansion um, of the United States. People got, you know, they got more independently minded as they uh, as they went toward the Rockies, you know. So that's that kind of mentality. I mean, you're from you're from Calgary, you know what I'm talking about, like the rugged yeah. individualism, like you know, we'll make this frontier our own kind of thing, as opposed to let's see if we can get blood from a turnip on the East Coast. No offense to any East Coasters who may or may not be listening. I'm just saying. Um, so yeah. you totally have a place to stay. Um, Thank you. In Connecticut. So East Coast for free. Um, and as you know, there's there's a ton of really awesome stuff up here, all the little oh. dates and the, the seafood and all the things. So it's come on over. 
We love that. We're actually, um, after our RV living, we've really dreamt about living in a boat. So we're kind of like leaving those areas for when we have a boat and we can get to better places than we can in an RV. Because 40 feet plus towing a Jeep makes us 55 feet. And that is a lot of feet to be driving down a highway <laughs> with all the people. <laughs> That's a lot of feet. That's um, just too many feet. So I just out of curiosity, it, how, is, that, is, also, is that also a lot of meters? Uh, I just, you know what? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I am not good with the meters or the kilograms. <laughs> no, no Canadian is. Are you just- <laughs> like, oh no, yeah. No, no honest Canadians good with the metric system. They're lying to you. They're lying to you. <laughs> no, I I'm good with grams. Yeah. I'm good with grams, but kilograms. Yeah. It's just really confusing. It, okay, I got you. Okay. So I'm sorry. I've dominated the question in Carrie. So I'll let you go in now. Okay. So. Give us a tour of of your book, Leanne. Oh wow! Well, um, originally, well, how, who did you approach Victory Bell, or did how did it come about? What what made you go? I'm going to write a book. Um, they approached me and really said that I could do whatever I wanted, and I I never really wanted to work with a publisher because I assumed that they would change my voice and make it something that I wasn't proud of. Um, but I just really loved their vibe. Um, if anyone's ever chatted with Victory Bell, they're some of the most passionate people and just want to bring health to a larger audience. And I just, I loved their mission. I loved the people that I chatted with and met. And so I decided to write a cookbook. Originally, it was just going to be 125 recipes, keto recipes that are dairy free. Um, I studied holistic nutrition for quite some time. Um, In 2007, I graduated and So I wanted to bring a lot of uh, whole foods into the keto space. At that point, there wasn't a lot of people talking about this. And so it was supposed to just be a cookbook. But then I sat down to plan these recipes and, you know, bone broth is used in some of the recipes. So I should probably tell people what bone broth is, how to make it, where to buy it um, so that people have options. And then, you know, I choose to use things like um, avocado oil as opposed to canola oil or sunflower oil. So why do I choose those? And then so I needed to talk about inflammation. And as I went through so these it grew recipes, legs. <laughs> exactly. It, it grew and grew and grew into this ginormous um, beast of a book that's 432 pages. Um, and I just, I wanted somebody to be able to pick up the book and get a um, very clear understanding of how keto can work um, from a whole food based perspective. So you're not going to see any recipes with like cream cheese as a main ingredient or, um, there's no fat head pizza. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm really sensitive to dairy and I've seen dairy, um, hold people back from being successful in their ketogenic diet. So I really wanted something where, yeah, if you can have dairy, you can add it. That's totally fine. Wherever I've used, um, coconut milk, you can use whipped cream anywhere where I've used coconut oil, you can use butter. Um, So I tried to make it um, inclusionary to everybody. And so the first uh, 150 pages are how to do keto from um, what keto is to how to eat keto and then more of the practical applications in the kitchen, like the bone broths. And why, why would you choose coconut oil over olive oil to cook with? Well, olive oil has a lower smoke point, um, whereas coconut oil has a higher smoke point. But if you're cooking at temperatures over 400 degrees, what sort of oil should you use? Because the ketogenic diet is a lot of fat, we should really know about our fats. And those two pages in that book took me over three weeks to write because it was so much research required of the omega-3 versus 6 levels and the inflammatory properties of certain oils. So that's kind of the first part. And then we get into on the meal plan portion, which um, during um, when you're reading through the how to eat keto portion, I give you five different profiles to follow um, for your ketogenic diet. So you have the classic keto, which we all know and love, low carb, high fat, nothing crazy about it. Then you have a pumped keto fat field profile, and that is way more protein. So if you're familiar with something like the carnivore diet, it really takes on that approach of using protein as your main source. Uh, protein and fat, basically. And then there are three other profiles um, that include uh, carb cycling. So you have one profile where you're doing carb cycling once a week, another one where it's twice a week, and another one where it's every single night. And so with the meal plans, you kind of need five different meal plans. So there's five different meal plans for a month. So there's five months of plans, and you can walk through how to use the recipes in the book for those specific um, 
uh, fat field profiles. And then it gets into the recipes and there's 120, well, there's like 137 of them. If you count all the variations of the different infused oils. And I tried to be mindful also with, you know, like my mayonnaise recipe, those also an egg free version, um, with a lot of the recipes I offer suggestions on how to make it coconut free and all the freeze for all the allergies. All the freeze. (laughs) All the freeze. (laughs) So was there any point in time where you, so like you're sitting down, because I know know the process, right? You start doing this, you're like, oh, well, now I got to do this. And so you start working on that and that like spines off into like three other things. So like, okay, now I got to do that. And like all of a sudden you look and there's 900 things when you started off with just like four was there any point in time like you threw up your hands and you're like, this, this is, I just can't do this. This is, I just, this is too much. Like I've got to. Oh, like, oh, probably at least once a day okay. I wanted to quit. Like, I think because I had bitten off so much more than I could chew at the time, um, we had planned for me to write the book in one year. And then um, I got a call from Victory about being like, could you have this ready in four months? Oh my gosh. Wow. (laughs) And, you know, it was just perfect timing. Like April of 2017, keto exploded and my book launched that month. Like it was just, it was a perfect timing and I wanted to jump on that wave right when it was, it was, it was going. So I thought, yeah, I can totally do this. And because it was just supposed to be a cookbook that then turned into this big beast, I remember I wrote the front matter first to get that out of the way. And oh, at least once a day, I, well, I was eating so much because when you're not sleeping and you're trying to work and you're eating, like I was eating so much, trying to keep myself engaged and writing and researching. And I was on the phone constantly with um, doctors and researchers and just trying to understand certain concepts. And um, then when I got to the recipe portion, I was so excited to be in the kitchen, in my element, like walking around and that excitement lasted probably like seven days until my back started hurting because I was standing all the time. Um, I had burns all over my arms. I was running back and forth to the grocery store like multiple times a day. I hadn't showered. Like, <laughs> right. So um, I definitely learned a lot of the entire process. But yeah, I wanted to give up almost every day. But I just I kept pushing because I knew that my voice needed to be heard in the keto space at that moment. And I wanted to contribute what I had to say. So I just kept, kept going. So was it, was it anything in particular? I mean, was it that desire to be like, okay, I'm going to finish what I started. Um, or like, when you're in the middle of it, it, it's sometimes hard to find the motivation to keep going. But yet every day when you wake up, you just, you do keep going. So was it just, was it just this like, there's no quit in Leanne or was it something else that sort of drove you to, to kind of get past that daily grind kind of thing? Um, there's a huge life lesson that I've learned over the last couple of years. And that is, it doesn't matter how much time, energy and money you put into something. If it's just not working, you got to give it up. So when I, I've done many things that I've just dropped because it hasn't felt right, or it's just not what I want to put out in the world or, oh, lots of things. It's just not serving me anymore. So it definitely wasn't that. I think what really fueled me was I was having um, weekly Q&A sessions with um, Healthful Pursuit uh, with the Healthful Pursuit community. And every time I got on those Q&As, I think it was on, um, what was that tool? It started with a P. Nobody uses it anymore. Periscope. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was on Periscope and there'd be thousands of women asking these questions and being just so lost and um, feeling so alone and lonely. Um, that was really what pushed me forward because I put so much heart and soul into the front matter of that book and tried to incorporate as much as I could into the recipes to make it so that if you're allergic to coconut, you can have it. If you're allergic to eggs, you can have it. If you can't have nuts, you can have it. And those were the questions I just kept getting over and over. Like, I'm not doing keto because I can't eat coconut. I'm not doing keto. I'm allergic to avocado. I I can't do this. My hormones are messed up. So that was really what pushed me forward is just, I really felt like some of those women could benefit from what I had written. So I just kept them in mind and did it. (laughs) Okay. Go ahead, um, Carrie. Sorry. I so if do you remember and I know you said after day 7 you like didn't even want to cook anymore but do <laughs> do you remember one particular recipe from the book that like made you really really happy that you maybe didn't think would work out and it worked out to be the best thing ever or oh yeah was there um, some was there a standout recipe that you were just like so proud of 
Yes. I, oftentimes, especially with baking, I like pray to the recipe gods. I'm like, <laughs> could you please right. just make this work? This is the seventh time I've prepared this. I've probably spent $130 on these ingredients. Like if this could just work out, it'd be so great. And normally, um, I don't have to do seven iterations. Uh, but the most magical thing is when you are so just like, you just really want this to work out. It's the first time you put it in an oven and it comes out and it's perfect. And it tastes perfect. And the consistency is perfect. And that was um, the sandwich bread uh, in the book. It's made with um, almond butter. Um, there's some fiber in there, some eggs. You mix it all together and you put it in a, in a liner and in the oven. And it came out like it was fluffy. It was crusty. I think it's called crusty sandwich bread because it's just, it was perfect. Like absolutely perfect. I couldn't, I couldn't even believe that I had created this thing. <laughs> so I'm curious in a situation like that, are you like scared to try it again? Like to see like, Oh, you have to try it again. Right. But it, was it like, Oh, please don't make this like an anomaly, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you always hope like, did I add something in there that I don't Forgot? remember adding? Yeah. I, like my little notebook, I write down everything, but sometimes you're just in the heat of the moment and you forget to put it in there. And so there was definitely that, oh gosh, I hope I wrote that down right. Or, you know, maybe there was something wrong with the oven and it's not going to turn out the same. Um, but I made it multiple times. Uh, Kevin, my husband, who also eats keto, finally um, loved it. Uh, so that was definitely one. And I think the other one was the St. Louis, um, was it butter, butter cake? Um, it's one of the desserts and it's, um, it was so perfect. Like after I baked it, I poked holes in it and I made a condensed, um, coconut milk, like a keto condensed coconut milk, um, with just coconut milk and erythritol, or you can use whatever sweetener you like. And I put it over top and it didn't make it soggy. It just made it like gooey and oh, it was so perfect. So you definitely have those wins for sure. Um, cool. And what's, what's your, would be your, if you're, do you ever cook from your cookbooks? I mean, it's like sort of. Like there are a bunch of recipes. There's probably 30 recipes in there that I just make all the time just because they're in my head. And as soon as they said, write a cookbook, those were the first 30 that I'm like, they need to be in there. But a lot of them, like, for example, um, there's a stuffed, um, like a pork, pork roast that's stuffed. I would never do that. Like I would never make, like I would never roll up a roast and like cook that. It's just too much work. But I understand that some people really like that stuff. But I would say of all the recipes that I love that I actually need to like look up in the book because I can never remember it. Um, the pina colada, I can never remember how much apple cider vinegar to use. I, uh, people, it's just, uh, you probably find this too, is that people, you know, they're asking questions on Facebook or wherever. And it's like, they think I have all like 500 of my recipes from oh, my yeah. cookbooks in my head. They think I can just go in the kitchen. I'm like, no, actually I have to pull it up too. Cause yeah. you know, when I developed like 32 ice cream recipes all at the same time, I actually lost track of, you know, which was which. So I oh, have yeah. to look at the recipe, right? I, I don't just like know all this stuff off the top of my head. Yeah, I don't either. But then there's like those classics, like um, Mike, uh, there's a recipe in there, Michael's um, pizza. And it's like a base of ground beef with pesto and meats on top. And I make that all the time, all the time. I know that recipe off the back, like just, I know it inside and out. <laughs> so of the 30 that you use in your own life, would you, what would be your favorite, would you say? And is it your favorite because of the way it tastes or because it's easy to make or it's just fun to make? Um, probably the Rocket Fuel Latte is the one that I use the most. I drink a Rocket Fuel Latte almost every day. Um, when I was new to keto, I did the whole butter coffee thing and I did the fats only. And I started to notice that I got really shaky after having them and super hungry. And my hormones actually um, became lower and my cortisol spiked when I'd have them. So I was trying to understand how this works. Um, and I started incorporating just a touch of protein and carbohydrates into my fatty coffee. Not enough that it um, increases insulin whatsoever. So if your goal with um, fasting is to regulate insulin, it maintains your um, blood sugar level, but just a little bit of collagen, a little bit of hemp hearts or some sort of um, nut butter. And I blend that in with the fats and that is ace. And I do that almost every day. So that one is more just like practical. Wait, did you just say that is ace? 
Nice. That is perfect. I'm going to start using that. I, I, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to commandeer that one from you. So Carrie, Deal. be forewarned, Carrie, you're going to hear that. That's ace. That is ace. <clears throat> Until he finds the next thing. <laughs> well, that, that's entirely true too. So go on. So, um, that was that book and, but I heard a rumor that you might be working on the next one. Hold on, Kim. Before we get before we yeah, before we get to the next book, can I ask a question about the the, the previous book? No. Yeah. Oh, oh never, never no. mind. No, apparently not. <laughs> apparently not. Yes, uh, you may. So speak. Here, this is an unfair question. So you feel free to uh, to to not answer it if you so desire. Is there any recipe in that book that you absolutely abhor? Yes. Okay. Can you tell yeah. us what it is? <laughs> yeah. It's um the no bake oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> <laughs> that just sounds bad. Like it sounds like it's not going to be good. And, well, it's funny because it's one of the most popular recipes in the book. Like, Cause it's people, no bake. You, Cause it's no bake. Right. I don't even know like chocolate chip cookies. I don't know. So um, it has hemp parts like hemp seeds as the base, uh, as the oatmeal and then, um, coconut oil, or you could use the fat from chocolate cacao butter to give it more of a chocolatey taste. I put in some ground cinnamon. You could use stevia or any sort of sweetener that you want. And then, um, stevia sweetened chocolate chips or any chocolate chip, um, that doesn't have sugar. Uh, you could even chop up like dark chocolate, um, and put it in there. And I personally hated the recipe. I thought it was gross. I was going to throw it out. And then my sister, her fian- her now fiance and my husband um, were over, like we were having dinner and Kevin said, oh, these cookies. I'm like, don't eat those. Don't give it to them. Like they're gross. I was going to throw them out anyway. He's like, no, 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 let's try them. And all three of them loved them. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, these are so good. Do you have more? And I'm like, really? Okay. <laughs> but so so I got to ask, did, did you still have an issue pushing it in the book? Do you still have an issue with yes. the fact that they're in yeah. there because you yeah. hated them? Yeah, I hate them. I hate yeah. them. But then people are like, oh my gosh, this recipe, it's so great. I love this book. And I'm like, what? It's so bad. Yeah. yeah. But see, that's good though, because uh, this is the, that's the world I live in, right? Like if I did, if I produced everything that only I, that, only I liked like the, if I didn't do anything that I didn't like, I would, I would, I would have nothing. I would have absolutely yeah. nothing. So it's good that you're willing to, you know, yeah, I think it's terrible, but people like it and it's, it's fine. You know, let's just you do this. Then now yeah. do you put a, like a, a warning like on there? Like personally, I think this is terrible, but go ahead. Give it a shot. Let's see what happens. You know what? I don't remember. I remember submitting the entire manuscript with all the recipes and they were like, yeah. So like you need introductions to all these recipes oh, yeah, right. and they need to be like stories. You can't just say like the best cookie ever with hemp parts. I hate this recipe, but make it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> be like- oh my gosh. That, I would so, I would so like give that book out to people. Like that is the book that I want to read. You know, <laughs> this is terrible. Okay. Enjoy. <laughs> Noted for the next book when I don't like a recipe, I'm just going to be like, I hate this, but you might love it. <laughs> I'm so in. I'm so in. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do that. I'm actually going to write, write a note to myself right now. <laughs> uh, so right. when you get the next book and you see <laughs> me right. say I hate that's, recipe, that's, that's dedicated that, to you. That's <laughs> what I, I'm going to be the first one to try. Like, yep. Yep. She was right on this one. Or I'm going to be like, nope, she was totally wrong. She was totally wrong on this one. Um, all right. Sorry. I, I didn't mean to digress this. So you got a new thing coming out. Yeah. Or you're working on a new thing. She's working on a new book. Yeah, I I I told my team and my husband and everyone I knew when this moment came to be like Leanne, you told me <laughs> that you didn't want to write another <laughs> That's book. Right. That's right. Right. You told me that actually. I remember. I, did. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure I told everyone. Right. Yeah, it was the one and only one hit wonder. Right. Not doing it again. Um, but you know, I really like going on a book tour, and you can't keep going on a book tour with the same book. You kind of got to write another one, right. and I. I love, I love interacting with people in real life. It gets so lonely behind a computer, talking into a microphone and not getting to just like hug people and talk with people and learn from people. And that, that was probably my favorite part of the whole book writing process. I've been on tour, I think five times with the one book. So, um, you know, and I, 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 I didn't cook for probably six months after launching the first book and I've started cooking again and I'm getting new ideas and how to use different ingredients and living in the RV definitely changes things of like, I don't have a big, well, I don't even have an oven. So I have to get very creative on 
how I cook things and I'm coming up with new ways to save money. So I do have some great new ideas. So um, Victory Belt definitely from even before the the first book launch, like, so when are you writing the next one? And just was this quiet bird in my ear of like, so when are you writing the next one? And finally, I I agreed to write the next one. (laughs) So So we're going to, I'll be waiting for day seven. And you're like, I told you people not to let me do this and you let me do it. And now I hate my life again. You know what? It's because I learned so much from the first book of what to do and what not to do. I'm going in with a completely different plan. Um, I'm going to be organizing the book very differently than what you'd see in a normal cookbook. Um, It's a concept that is new that I don't know if it'll work. People might hate it, but people might love it. But it's going to make planning the recipes and also using the book a lot easier. So I think having that in place and uh, now Kevin is working with Helpful Pursuit full time also, my husband. So he'll be there to do the grocery runs (laughs) so that I don't have to do that. And I'm working with a photographer for the recipes this time. So I can just focus on creating awesome recipes and not have to also worry about the making them beautiful and photographing them and props and all those things that weighed me down quite heavily. So I've been, I've been trying to get my cat to take some of that on oh, and yeah. I just, I failed. Get to work. Like, yeah. I can't get him to do anything useful other than look cute. Um, yeah, it's really unfortunate. They really have a free ride of life. Like all they got to do is lay there in the sun. And uh, they they also don't have thumbs, Carrie. I don't know if you know that or not, but they they yeah. But you could use your little cat paw, <laughs> just like boop, you know, slowly you slapping the, the camera off the counter, and then yeah, like, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Um, so. Now this is why this is why uh this is why parents have more than one child is because after a period of time the mother forgets the hell that she went through to yes. bring the one child in mm-hmm. and all of a sudden uh maybe it wasn't so bad you know let's yeah. let's see it again now you have you have contracted your entire team to not let you go through that again. And clearly they have dropped the ball on this. Totally dropped the ball. They just laughed when I said, (laughs) so I may or may not have dot, dot, dot. I mean, it's an ongoing joke. Right. Like I do things that I say I'm never going to do again. And then I do them again. (laughs) Uh, That's, that's, that's good. I mean, at least you're consistent. At least you're consistent with that. So is there a particular theme for the upcoming work that you're, you're planning or is it just basically going to be kind of, um, it just a just like a generalized kind of thing. Yeah, so it's going to be called the Keto Diet Cookbook, mm-hmm. super original, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, <laughs> and I really want it to be, um, you know, phase two of the keto diet. So I don't want to. I'm I'm not a big fan as a consumer of like buying a book of a person who writes a bunch of books or programs and it's like basically the same book as the last book, just like slightly different. Right. That drives me nuts. So mm-hmm. um, with this book and the way that we're organizing it. Um, I don't want to give that away because it's a super secret awesome thing. Um, But I want to do more daily meals. I found that the main, um, not complaint, but just feedback that we got from people is a lot of the recipes are like fancier, like you wouldn't use them every day. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do that because I think people, when they go to keto, they feel like, you know, I can't have a dinner party. That was my mom's biggest thing and why she didn't want to go keto is like, how am I supposed to host a dinner party or have people over and feed them keto and them love it? And so a lot of the recipes are um, geared toward um, enticing your family to be like, wow, that's so great. I want to eat that. Um, so for this, I just want to do more daily meals, like everyday things that you would eat that are really, really quick and easy to throw together um, that are dairy free and work more toward the fat fueled protocol, which is a whole food based ketogenic approach. Um, so there'll be breakfast, lunch, dinner type of things, snacks. Um, no cookbook is complete without sweet things. I will always love sweet things. Um, so incorporating that in there as well. So I, I have a, I have a question. Um, is there, um, the, <clears throat> the, the process that you're going through, you said you've learned some things, um, and you're, you've streamlined some things and you've kind of offloaded some of that. So, do you think that's going to, so, okay. So you've offloaded some of the process, so you don't have that weighing you down, but you also have a limited resource because you're in an RV. So how does that offset each other? You know what I'm asking? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We rent a house and live in it okay. until the book is done. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm not writing a book in an RV. Okay. Cause that would be really tough. I would imagine. That would, that would be absolutely horrible. Like I have one, <laughs> like how am I supposed to create a recipe with one burner right. and i don't have an oven like no right. just no not gonna go no 
<laughs> and three dogs. Like, <laughs> right. it's no. I got you. Um, okay. So then, uh, what, so what is your typical menu like? Like, what is it that you eat uh, aside from the cookbook? Um, yeah. Like, what is it? Cause, you know, you're in an RV or if you're not, you know, you're sort of hotel living. Um, yeah. like, what's it, what's your menu like? Typically. Um, I start almost every day with a fatty coffee of some sort or a fatty bone broth. Is it decaf? Um, the bone, yeah, bro- it's the bone broth. Decaf. Okay. decaf bone broth. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. I like oh, that. Decaf too. bone broth. Always a thing. <laughs> right. Look that up. Google. <laughs> <laughs> so I drink uh, decaf mushroom coffee and I put uh, a bunch of different mushroom elixirs in there and then my rock of latte ingredients. And then usually if I'm still not wanting solid food, I'll have a bone broth then or I'll have a bone broth in the afternoon. Um, And then just like lunch and dinner, I usually only have two meals a day, sometimes one depending on the day. But uh, for lunch and dinner, it's just meat and vegetables and a lot of fat. I'm doing more of an AIP thing right now. So I'm not doing nuts or seeds, no nightshades um, and no eggs. So a lot of my... uh, Meals are just vegetables, meats, and a lot of some sort of oil. Um, and I keep it really simple. When when I'm staying in a hotel, like during recording days like this, I don't eat all day. And then I just have like a massive feast at night and eat all the things until I can barely move and then <laughs> right. <laughs> repeat. Um, but if I'm staying in a hotel for multiple days, I'll usually just get a place with a kitchen so that I can, you know, go to a market, grab some food and cook it up. But it's like meat, vegetables, fat, repeat. Do you have uh, what one might consider like a an indulgence, a, a keto indulgence that you you don't partake of all the time, but when given the opportunity, it's it's a thing for you? Coconut butter. Really? Oh my gosh, that stuff! I have like a ten pound tub of coconut butter, gotcha. and there's a specific place in the RV for <laughs> my coconut butter. Like it has its own section. And if I want to get really crazy, I'll add cacao powder to that, okay. which I haven't been doing because AIP. But if I if I want to get real nuts, I'll put cacao powder in that and mix it up. And I don't use a sweetener, and it's like chocolatey goodness, gooey. And if if you really want to get crazy, you then put it on a like a silicone pan and put it in the freezer for a couple minutes, so it turns like hard yeah it's good stuff yeah oh it's best now i want them yeah <laughs> well you're welcome for that <laughs> um all right carrie sorry go on no that was it we're 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 at, we're out of time as much as we could sit and talk about all the fun canadian american british allegiances <laughs> well <laughs> um, of course you're outnumbered brown because you don't share the same queen and we do no because sherry's my queen see, see what did there <laughs> um um so i so to, to kind of tag on to one thing that, that Leanne sort of said, um, she sort of said this, um, and by that, I mean, she actually said this. Uh, so <laughs> at KetoCon, she, cause she said she really likes interacting with people in real life, like face to face. So when she was at KetoCon, it literally took her hours to get from one row to the next row of vendors. Like I walked by like early in the morning and she's at, she's like at the, at the first vendor booth at the very first row. And like four hours later, she's just <laughs> now getting to the second row and yeah. like, the, like not, a, not even concerned. Like she was just like totally cool. Like, yeah. So I'm just saying like, absolutely. You're, we really appreciate you coming on the show first of all, but you know, because you're, you're authentic. Um, you're very fun. Um, you're very effervescent. So, uh, thank you for all of that. Thank you for, for being, uh, sort of a, a, a pleasant voice in the keto wilderness as well. Um, we need more of them. So I just want to say thanks. Um, and I wanted to like echo that, that sentiment, you know, cause I, I done seen it firsthand is what I'm saying. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I really, oh, thanks for putting it together because it's just such an amazing event with such beautiful people and such empowering stories. Like everyone is just so inspirational and the things that people have gone through and what keto has done. It's yeah. just like, well, oh. right. <laughs> and we, we were, Leanne and I were in the same building for three oh. days straight and didn't see each other. <laughs> I, Right. That's how I never crazy got to the third row. Right. I never, right. never right. got to the third row. <laughs> right. Leanne yeah. never got never actually got to the third row and Carrie was being mobbed the whole time too. Um so this is one of the reasons that I'm glad that I'm neither Canadian nor a cook. Uh because I get left alone, you know. So <laughs> this is good times for me. Um all right, so I, I know it's super early where Leanne is. So uh, you know, 
on top of her just being uh, a wonderful interviewee, but she actually got up super early to do this. So thanks, Leanne, for that. Um, yes, thank you. I really appreciate it. You can go back to bed now. <laughs> right. Ah, uh, no, no rest for the wicked. Yeah, the I'll day has keep the... interviewing, keep chatting all day. Right. Um, okay. So, Carrie, do you have any parting shots or final words? Oh, by the way, sorry. Um, we should say like where if if someone hasn't connected with you on social media, I'm not sure how oh, that right. has happened. But how do how do they how do they connect with you? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Healthful Pursuit. And then I have a blog, healthfulpursuit.com. And I have a 12-week um, video training program called Happy Keto Body. And that opens for enrollment um, in August. You can go to happyketobody.com for that. And I have a podcast called The Keto Diet Podcast. Very, uh, very SEO friendly is what that is. <laughs> yeah. Um, all Gotta right. get the tags in. That, well, yeah, she, uh, but I mean, it's, it, it works, right? Yep. Um, all right, Carrie, what's, uh, what's the parting shot? Oh, the parting shot. So many, my brain just kind of went, Ooh, there's so much I want to say at this point. Um, go to the Calgary stampede. <laughs> right. Um, don't eat pancakes at the top of the Calgary tower. Um, try living in an RV. Um, and, um, and if you want to know how, uh, to eat keto by Leanne's book, I like that. <laughs> right. Solid advice. Um, I did forget to ask. Okay. So I'm, I'm totally ruining the, the vibe of ending the show, but I did forget to ask, what's the most challenging aspect of living in an RV for you? There's so many, um, <laughs> not enough storage <laughs> for coconut so, butter. <laughs> there are so <laughs> there many, are so many, uh, I would have to say, because I'm a type a, I need to have control over every part of my life. I think the largest challenge has been surrendering to the fact that you will never know where you're going to be or what is going to happen or how much that problem is going to cost. Gotcha. <laughs> like, yeah. So you just kind of have to run with it and know that there is no plan and that's okay. And, and be okay with that. Right. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right. For reals this time. Thank you, Leanne. Um, thank Carrie, you. Carrie, I guess I'll talk to you next week. Yes, you will. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. See ya.